Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. High Card, another adventure of George Valentine. Well, it's ten o'clock already, gentlemen. Shouldn't we... I mean, my watch says ten. Chester has the cards and... Sure, what are we waiting for? We're going to do it, let's get... No! No. Ames, Salto, this is crazy. It's insane. Was your idea, wasn't it, Norton? Yes, but a man's guilt is no more to be bandied about. Oh, get off the words. There's the good name of the man to be thought of afterwards. Let's get it over with now. Now! It's all right. How about you, Chester? Huh? What? He's had a good many, Mr. Norton. I'm not sure that oh, he'd be... Oh, a... I'm all right. Uh, yes, I'm all right. Okay, give me those cards. <laughs> Spread them out on the I table. I know what I'm doing. Well, hurry up, huh? We'll get it over with, the four of us. We'll need a piece of paper. Envelope here in your jacket. Do you mind? Of course I do, if it's got my name on it. Valentine. George what? Valentine. What? Oh, your wife's letter... From somebody named Valentine. Uh, if I'd know her friends. Here, here's a blank sheet, club stationery. Uh, couldn't we get on with the... Dear Mrs. Ames, I am so sorry to hear of your concern over your husband. Naturally, I will do whatever I can to help. Sincerely, George Valentine. Give me that. But... <laughs> concern. How do you For like... For heaven's sake, stop the stalling, both of you. Will you get... All right. I draw one. Go on, draw a card. Me? Go on, Salto. All right. Nine of diamonds. Yeah. Norton? (laughs) Nine of clubs. Nine again? Give me one of those. Jack, diamonds. All right, Chester. Chester. Huh? Your turn. Draw. Oh, I, I'm all right. Draw. Oh, yes. King. <laughs> king of hearts. Look, Chester drew the king of hearts. Shut up. <laughs> you understand, Chester. High card. Yes. Yes, the paper. Here, here. You can use the pen. Uh, I'm all right. <clears throat> I, Jeffrey Chester, if I confess one year ago to this date, it was I who murdered Miss Dorothy Pullman. It is after ten o'clock now, Chester. I'd like to have a drink or two. I'll I'll have to run down to my boarding house. There's a bill I should pay. Uh, The watchman's spare gun is in the locker room, and it would look better if you did it at the same place that... Leave him alone, Salto. I'm all right. I could run downtown first, then come back, have the drinks, if I could borrow your car, Mr. Ames. Sure, Chester. Let's go over and get you my car. Sure. Thank you. You don't have to worry, any of you. I'll be back. The club bar drinks. We always had two, she and I. But I'm all right. You can mail my confession of guilt to the police. I got the high card. I'll be dead by midnight. Sylvia, it's a big idea, that letter in my coat pocket. 
Miss Valentine, who is he? Honey. Oh, there you are. So sorry to hear of your concern over your husband. Of all the meddling... Please. Hello? This is Mr. Valentine. Miss Brooks, my husband, Mr. Ames. Oh, how how do you do, Mr. Ames? Huh. Put my foot in my mouth. Just who are you? Did you have a nice time, darling? Where have you been? Huh? Oh, over to the club. Yeah, they let me in. Just playing a little cards, that's all. Look, Mr. Ames, I had a letter from your wife. My wife is leaving me. What difference does it make? Go on, get out. She's hired snoopers before, my friend. Get your car. Oh, shut up. Listen to me. You were beaten up the other night. Get them out of here. Get yourself out of here. Oh, no, you won't. Stop it. No, listen. What's the matter with you, friend? Victor, that was your car, wasn't it? Driving away? Yes. Yes, I loaned it to Somebody needs it for a while tonight. He's got some things to do. Mr. Ames, I know I'm butting in, but your wife has been worried and Please. I'm only here. I'm going back over to the club. There's nothing anybody can do now except to make things worse. What? Darling! Send him home, Sylvia. I'll take care of myself. Oh. I put your letter in his pocket on purpose, Mr. Valentine. He'll never listen to me or believe me. It was certainly an understatement when you said he was upset. Yes. But you haven't said why yet. Now, just what's going on tonight, Mrs. Ames? Where's your husband really been? I don't know. Playing cards, I guess. He doesn't generally, but no harm could come out of that, could it? Maybe not. You said he'd been beaten up. Oh, yes, I know he's in danger. Go on, go on. Your husband's a lawyer, isn't he? He was until a year ago. His practice disappeared on him. What do you mean? Suspicion, distrust, whispers. This is a small town, Mr. Valentine. A very nice town. My husband used to be a very nice person. What happened? Have you ever heard of the Dorothy Fullman murder case? Well, yes, yes, I think so, only I don't remember the It was never solved. She was murdered, beaten up. It was horrible. They never even found the weapon. Police, experts, everyone's been over it a million times. It was a whole year ago. They'll never get a confession from anyone. Mrs. Ames, was your husband... My husband was very nearly tried for that murder. Oh, I see. But then if he weren't tried, then... There uh... are people in this town who believe, who really believe that he killed her. Who will always believe it. There wasn't any actual evidence. But the circumstances... Horrible, sordid, awful. Now look, Mrs. Ames... Mr. Valentine, we have children. I'm taking them away. I have to. He won't leave. He... He's so mixed up. Bitter. I don't know what he'll do. It, it keeps getting worse and worse. All right, all right. Now, just take it easy. I'll go after him, see if there is anything I can do. You'll never listen to me. Brooksy, stay here, will you? Get her off to the train. Mrs. Ames, just tell me one thing, will you? Do, uh... Do you think your husband killed this Dorothy Fullman? Mr. Valentine, I I don't want anything worse to happen. I... That's all. I say, excuse me. Mm. You're Mr. Valentine, Arthur? George Valentine? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was looking for the club doorman. My name is Norton. This is quite a pleasure. I've heard of you. Uh, Seen your name here and there? Oh, is that so? Uh, See, here. Uh, Join me on the veranda for a cup of coffee, will you? Hospitality of our little club isn't much. I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. I'm looking for a man named Ames. Oh, yes. Victor Ames, splendid chap. Haven't seen him in some time. Might be here later. Uh, We can wait together. I said I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. (laughs) Well, I certainly don't intend to be pushy. Oh, oh, wait a moment. Uh, Perhaps I should be a bit more honest and say there's a little matter I'd like your advice on. I'd still go looking for Mr. Ames. Even if I said the little matter concerned, Mr. Ames? (laughs) You twist my arm. (laughs) Then we can do better than the veranda, I think. People there. There's a lounge in the locker room. All right. Through here? Uh, To your left. 
generally closed at night. But it... There we are. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what's the story? Uh, nothing so very important, but uh, sit down, sit down. How do you know who I was out there? Well, Ames had mentioned your coming. You said you haven't seen him lately. Try again. Uh, really, Mr. Valentine, I... Hey, who's that? Hey, anybody in here? Locking up. Blue shirt. Private police? Uh, just a moment. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, Mr. Valentine, let go of me. Well, what are you doing here? Ah, what do you mean? Stop it. Who are you? Hey, hey, what is it? Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I hey, found this man. Break it up, break it up. Break uh, what up, John? I found him in here. I, I left my wallet in, in wallet my locker. All, the... all right, you... all right. Oh, it's you, Mr. Norton. He was snooping, Jimmy. Now my wallet's gone. He took it. He must have. Oh, brother. If what this am is... I supposed to do? Search him. Oh, but he won't have it, will he? Uh, that, that's not the way they work. Uh, but uh, he's trespassing. You can lock him up for that. I'll see the steward prefer charges. I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. What? I said I'm sorry. You're not going to prefer anything. Good night. Jimmy, my father was the founder of this club. When I issue an order to one of the paid employees, I expect yeah, that... Yeah, 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 sure, sure, issue away. Only someplace else, huh? I'll handle this end. Good night, Mr. Norton. Jimmy, I have never in my life been so... Good night. Yes, good night. <laughs> well, that was something. Okay, bud, hand it over. What? Oh, now, wait a minute. You don't mean you believe that old school ties gag about... And still you boot him out? The wallet, bud. Oh, sure. Mine. Here. Credentials. The works. Good enough. Oh. Well, I didn't exactly figure. Valentine, huh? Yeah, that's right. Only look, Buster. Why? Why'd you treat him like that? Will him like lettuce before you even know what he had to say? Because I have no use for the high and mighty Mr. Norton. And don't worry, I won't get in trouble either. <laughs> he maybe don't know it, but he's being eased out the side door of this club anyway. All four of them are. All four? Would you clear that up? You ever hear the Dorothy Fullman murder? Well, that nice, dignified man there, that Norton, for my money, he's the one that killed him. So you've got your opinions, Jimmy. It's just an opinion. I'll stick to it, Mr. Valentine. But there wasn't any concrete evidence against either him or Victor Ames. And what did you mean, all four of them? And why did Norton want to stall me like that? That's all he was trying to do, keep me away from something. You're the detective, mister. Uh, oh, hey, excuse me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, hello, Mr. Chester. Oh, Jimmy. Just standing here having a couple of drinks. I, I was downtown. Yes. That's done. Looks like you've had enough. Oh, no, no, no. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm all right. Sure, sure, Mr. Chester. See him? Hmm. Oh, that guy? He's one of them. Say it faster, will you? One of the four. Dorothy Fullman was murdered in her house just over the bluffs across the golf course. Yeah. They never got enough evidence. They never will. But the police did prove that it couldn't be anybody else. It had to be one of the four men mixed up with it. Who are they? Mr. Norton, Ames, big fool, always in trouble. Another man named Salto. He asked me he couldn't have got to first base with it. And Chester there. Oh, I get it. Not much left of Chester, is there? All of them have changed. But he don't even know what he's doing anymore. Hmm. Nobody will confess, no evidence. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, come here. Now, excuse me, Stuart, back to business. No, no, I'm right behind you. Huh? That's Victor Raines with him, isn't it? With the Stuart? Sure it is. Valentine. Yeah, we catch up again, friend. It's a busy night. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Jimmy, there's trouble in here. What? The card room, the one with the back entrance. I put those cards in there myself just this evening. Valentine, I've got to see oh, you alone. Hold it, will you? Go on, Stuart. This deck of cards. Some men have been playing in there, apparently, or drawing high man or something. Well, what is it? What's the matter? Well, sir, it's more puzzling than anything else. At a club like this, someone was being dishonest. A rather hasty job, but here you see, this deck has been marked. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. In the average car... 
Believe it or not, there are something like 7,000 separate parts. But no single unit needs more exacting care than the automatic transmission. It can be damaged by just the smallest amount of dirt. Low fluid level also would be harmful to this precision-made unit. Now, if your car has an automatic transmission, here's the way to keep it in order, to avoid trouble and expensive repair. Have this vital part checked every thousand miles at a standard station or independent Chevron gas station. Here, the men are carefully trained in the care of automatic transmissions. It's important to have the fluid drained and refilled at regular intervals. Superior care of automatic transmissions is another car saver service at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Nine of diamonds. Nine of clubs. Jack, diamonds. Your turn, Chester. Draw. Yes, I'm king of hearts. I hereby confess one year ago it was I who murdered Miss Dorothy Fullman. I got the high card. I'll be dead by midnight. Only if your name is George Valentine, all you know is that Dorothy Fullman murder case has never been solved. That there were four suspects, but the police have despaired of ever finding out who her murderer was. Yes, all you know is that Mrs. Ames was worried about the strange behavior of her husband. And more recently, that four men have been playing cards in the back card room of the local club. And that the steward says the deck of cards is marked. No. No, they can't be. Give me Hey, hey, take it easy, Mr. Ames. Let's see, Stuart. They're not marked. What's bothering you so much, Mr. Ames? Kind of a crude job. Yes, Jimmy. Little ticks on the edges, like this. But the person who did it could tell the cards, all right. Get out of here, both of you, Jimmy Stewart. Hey, hey, slow down, Buster. Look, I've got to see you, Valentine. I've got to see you alone. Have you been sampling some of that stuff Chester uses, Mr. Ames? What's so important about Chester? Chester. Hey, uh, where are you going, Miss Ames? He was downtown. He's back now. Look, Buster, will the you bar. please? He's here in the bar. He's having those last two drinks. Well, there you are. Oh, hello, Angel. Oh, Mr. Ames, I saw your wife to the station. She said to tell you... Yes, yes, uh, of course. Where is he? What? Little guy, Brooksy. He was in here a few minutes ago. He was having a couple of drinks. Yeah, he's gone now. Well, I did see somebody leaving just when I came in. He looked like he could use a little sleep. It's five minutes to twelve. Time for you to clear it up, friend. Where's Chester gone? What's happening tonight? Could have been any one of us. I mean, the cards marking them. But I didn't try to save my own skin. I would have gone through it if I'd been high man. What on earth? He... I'm trying to remember. The watchman's spare gun, that was it. Quit pulling, Buster. What? Yeah, the closet, the back hall. Come on, hurry, will you? The watchman's gun, that was it. Only the cupboard was bare. He's taken it already. Chester. There's certainly no gun in here. We drew. I man. He had the king of hearts. Little Chester, the weakest one in the whole bunch. Didn't even seem to react. What do you look? I, you... I, I know I'm talking wildly. I'll explain later. We've got to find him first. Hurry. Well, we're with you, all right, but who's he going to use this gun on? Who's he? Oh. Isn't it perfectly obvious, Mr. Valentine? On himself. <laughs> Like Jimmy said, house over by the bluffs across the golf course. It's certainly deserted looking for sale, for lease. Chester must be here. It's where he'd come. It's Dorothy Fullman's house, huh? Where she was killed? Yes, in the living room. Found her body there. Beaten to death. Doors open, you see. Chester? Chester! Well, he's not here. The fall guy. Well, we're a long way on the outside of that old crime now, aren't we? Perhaps we beat him here, missed him in the dark... Chester! What do you mean, George? Ames here knows what I mean. This is where it happened. It wasn't a pleasant crime. And inside a man, a terrible thing like that can get 
bigger in a year, huh? Mr. Valentine, I didn't kill her. Sure, sure, that's what they all say. But Buster, I'm just finally beginning to realize what a hopeless, crazy thing is happening tonight. Wait a minute, George, listen. Upstairs. Come on. Chester? Where are you, Chester? It's me, Victor Ames. Salto. Salto, what are you doing here? Mr. Valentine's all right, Salto. He knows the whole story now. But I didn't mark any cards. It wasn't me. Then what are you doing here, Salto? Hiding? Leave him alone, you... Ames. Leave him alone. And never mind who marked the cards. But what do you think, Brooksy? Four men actually drawing to see which one would be a fall guy. Which one would confess to a murder. I don't believe it. Oh, yes. It's very easy for the two of you to talk like that. I told them it but was ridiculous. Same as Russian roulette. Spin the cartridge wheel. See who gets the bullet. Yeah, they couldn't stand to be pointed at. The suspicion, the shadow of guilt. The crime that would never be solved otherwise. Yes, I told them that, but Ames and Norton kept You were willing them. enough, Salter. You didn't have any solution, any way to keep yourself from going insane. Maybe you can't believe it, Miss Brooks. Why should you? You don't have a private hell to live in. I don't think that's exactly what she meant, Ames. Sure, I know it's not like in books where people just forget about murder. But to try to dig yourself out of a swamp by drawing taking one chance in four of being tapped for guilt just to lay all the ghosts for the others. If we did it, so what? We did it. We've nearly killed each other trying to make each other confess anyway. I was thinking about the second part of the bargain. Suicide for the elected guilty one. Yeah, to make sure the police would accept that confession. Mr. Ames, you might have gone through with it. You're that kind. But I just don't believe that most men Check, would... Angel. All right, how about it, Soto? That's why you're here, isn't it? To see if Chester would go through with something that you wouldn't do yourself. That I... I'm sorry, Victor. I wouldn't have. I couldn't have. I went along with it. Of course I did. If I'd been high card, I don't know what I would have done, but... Okay, there's one down. Wet feet. By this time, Chester must be aboard the nearest freight train headed for parts unknown. Chester? He signed the confession. But he wouldn't do it. I know he'd been At drinking, the last but... moment, it's a little hard to pull the trigger. Is that so? You're so sure, aren't you? Huh? Moonlight out there. Window, come here. Look. It's him. It's Chester. But he's not coming toward the house. Just walking. That's the path runs up by the bluffs. Yes, and if anything happens to him, it's our fault, Salto. Come on, step on it. Run! <laughs> Chester! Chester! What's the matter with him? He doesn't even listen. Oh, look out, George. Yeah, these bluffs are pretty steep, aren't they? Chester! I'm going to climb up this way, too. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Huh? You what? just stay behind me with Miss Brooks. Valentine. There's another way this whole thing tonight can work, but I'm going to see that it doesn't. George! Look! He's up on one of the edges. Yeah. Stand still! Oh! What a... Norton! Get out of here. Leave him alone. Norton, wouldn't you know? Stand still! I'm warning you, I have a gun. Oh, yeah, sure. The one from the watchman's locker? He didn't take it. Chester didn't take hey, it. Hey, what's all this? So you did. Sure, sure. You guys wouldn't just make a deal for somebody to commit suicide. You'd get him to write a confession and then murder him. He killed her. He killed our little one. He confessed. George, he's up on the edge. Look at him. Leave him alone. He'll jump, I tell you. Look at the way he's acting. I just followed him. To give him the gun he didn't take. James, listen to me. It will all be over. For all of us. Are you inhuman? Old... Let it happen. If you don't, it'll be the same thing over and over George! and over again. Yeah, look. We can't stop him from here. And he does look like he wants to jump. Okay, so I've been wrong, so I... Valentine! Get out of the way with that gun! Hey, I just... Okay, now you're all I've right, Martin. Stay there, all of you. Chester! Mr. Chester! I'm all right. Uh, yes? Mr. Chester, now you listen to me. I can't reach you. But... Uh, but get away now. There's something I'm going to do. Yeah, I know, I know. Kill yourself. But you were supposed to do it where she died, weren't you? Wasn't that the agreement, Chester, to make it look good? Can you understand me, Mr. Chester? Well, I'm all right. That's it, that's it. Just keep looking at me. It should have been the living room, though. Or were they always wrong? She was beaten, bruised. I remember they said they never found a weapon. Was it really up here that she died? Did she dump? Was she thrown? 
It would have looked the same if somebody then carried a body back to a house. I'm going to jump, you know. Get back, get back. No, you're not. You're too curious, Chester. This year, since Dorothy Fullman died, must have been the worst for the one who really killed her. Don't you think so, Mr. Chester? What? What do you mean? But admitting it is worse. Some people can't ever do that. They'd rather die than do that. I'm going to jump. You can't stop me. But you don't even want your death to be a confession, do you? Well, they gave you a chance, the little card drawing. You know the masked deck, the marked one, would be found sooner or later. You deliberately left it behind. Uh, no, no, go away The now. world would say your confession was a fraud, you were a poor little patsy. Well, uh, any of them could have marked the cards, Norton, Salter, and... The high man marked them. The guilty man, Chester. All I've said is built on that. When there's a drawing, a man can't make another man take a certain card. So if he marks them, he only marks them for himself. Check? Yes, yes, I understand, but... To pick his own card. But the lowest card picked tonight was a nine. If a man wanted a low card, that's not very safe, is it, with 52 cards in the deck? You know, it baffled me for a while until I saw that you really did want to die. She was faithless. She was bad. Get out of my way! Oh, no, you don't. Now, just hang on. You're going to live, Buster. You're going to write a real confession. George, it did work out that way, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, Brooksy, they pieced it together again. That's why Chester went up to the bluffs instead of taking the gun. That's how he had killed Dorothy Fullman a year back. Hmm. And if the first confession had gone through, if he'd shot himself, nobody ever would have believed it. Well, the other three would have always thought they railroaded the poor little punchy. <laughs> Traded their private little hells for new ones. If Mrs. Ames weren't still in love with her husband and called you here. Mm-hmm. George, isn't it uh, remarkable what a woman will do for the man she loves? Remarkable. Forgive, forget, protect. I'll remember that. Darling. <laughs> the very next time I'm suspected of murder. Oh! Good night, Brooksy. A newspaper reporter does plenty of stop-and-go driving in a month's time, short trip driving around town, and that's tough on car engines. Short trips prevent an engine from warming up. Corrosive rust gets a bigger chance to attack cylinder walls. One newspaper reporter wrote that he beat this kind of engine punishment by using RPM motor oil. I've driven my 1940 Buick, he wrote, for more than 92,000 miles. During this time, RPM motor oil was used exclusively. This is probably the reason why no repairs to the running gear or engine have been necessary. I thought you'd like to know about it, unquote. Well, friends, that's why RPM is first choice where driving's toughest. Ask short trip drivers anywhere in the West. They'll tell you more people prefer RPM than any other motor oil. And you'll find it's the best engine insurance you can buy for your car. Get RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Larry Dobkin was heard as Ames, Bob Griffin as Chester, Harold Deerenforth as Salto, Ted Osborne as Norton, Lorene Tuttle as Mrs. Ames, and Bob Bruce as Jimmy. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>